I bought amazing Gulf oil sign. I had it shipped to get restored. Pretty amazing, huh? It's big, man. Where are we going to put it? Ask Rick if I got a great. There are a couple of bomb fins, probably from World War II or something. I'm not sure exactly what they're worth. Uh, I kind of will take anything at this point as long as they're out of my backyard. This What's this? Elias Ash Multiatrum Chemicum Britannicum is the secret to creating the Philosopher's Stone. There are a couple of bomb fins, probably from World War II or something. I'm not sure exactly what they're worth. Uh, I kind of will take anything at this point as long as they're out of my backyard. I have some political memorabilia, a Secret Service ID for J. Howard McGrath. Okay. His White House pass. Oh, that's cool. The Attorney General of the United States, J. Howard McGrath. I really don't know what they're worth, but we'll see how it goes. These are different. Tell me what you got. Two Russian Cossack Shashka swords. I'm asking $2,000 for each sword. Really kind of crazy. You know the Cossacks? They were a big deal military organization. I mean, they were pretty badass. So what do we got? 1984 Olympic boxing ticket stub with a few autographs on him. That's Evander Holyfield and Mike Tyson. This is definitely cool. Corey talks about the athletes who signed the ticket. How did you get them to sign it? The U.S. team had a buy. They were all in the street clothes, kind of hanging out with them. Mike's head was hanging low, riding the pine. He really didn't have anything to do. Yeah, young and didn't have any money. And first time on an airplane, took him to lunch. And that's when I got a band at Hollyfields. After these games, both these guys were huge. Both went pro immediately after that. Corey asks for an offer. What are you looking to do with it? I'm ready to sell it. Any idea what you're looking to get? I think 500 bucks. I've never seen anything like this. Do you mind if I have a guy come in? Please do. This ticket seems like a good deal to Corey, so he calls an expert friend over to assist him further. On uh, Tyson, blue ballpoint pen, both are live. Tyson, the same type of signature. Very basic, very neat. You got a winner here. The expert suggests a price for the ticket. Today's marketplace, $2,000. <laughs> All right, it's a deal, 500. Wow, you shouldn't have brought him in. What do you take for it? 1,500. I'll give you 1,000. It's more than fair, knowing how rare it is, 1,500. I'm just gonna have to stick it at 1,000. You can hold on for a couple more. So if you ever wanna come back, please do, okay? Thanks. It's a rare Civil War era photograph. If I'm able to sell this today, I'll buy some more unique items. And it has a childhood home of Henry Wentz. Ended up in the Confederate Army. Okay. Rick discusses the item with the owner for a while. It's literally the battle that completely changed the course of American history. Have you ever seen any other pictures of this? Library of Congress does have one. Okay. Photographs this at this time period. The paper wasn't the top quality meant to last. How much you want for it? 15000 Okay. Um. The expert gives solid background information on Wentz House and discloses that the photograph is not related to the house. The Wentz House is, is an interesting one. There's no known photograph of the Wentz House that existed during the battle. There is a drawing. This is not the Wentz House. The Wentz house was half tall log structure. It doesn't quite fit. This is not, you no. can't confirm. It's not the Wentz house. It's just not for me. Have a good one, man. Well, thanks for looking at it. No problem. So Mark might be a little bit smarter than me. A little bit. Life-sized Pinocchio marionettes. Some Pinocchios. I have three of them. Originally made by Bob Baker marionettes for the Disney company. I came to the pawn shop today to sell my Pinocchio marionettes. I'd like to sell them today because they're taking up closet space. The least amount of money I'm willing to take for them is five grand. A visual demonstration shows how the marionettes work. Of course, there you do your little walk and your hand thing. I don't know, I'm not a puppeteer. You have no idea how to use that tool. Disney is one of the most collectible brands in the world. Plenty of potential buyers for these. How much did you want for them? These things are worth 10,000 to 100,000. I got a buddy who knows all about these things. You mind if I call him up and get him down here to take a look at them? No, that's fine. Bob Baker was commissioned to make these pieces. He's created over 3,000 puppets, I believe. Whoa. The animators would have used back in the late 30s to animate for the movie. The puppeteer moving around Pinocchio and then the artist would have been around drawing it. Very very rarely. Okay, so everything about him is legit. He came out of the Bob Baker studio. Do you have some paperwork too? Well, it's 100% that these are licensed pieces. The final deal is made. No. Do you got a realistic number of 14,000? There's no way. It's gonna take a while to sell them. I'll give you nine grand for them. Would you do 10? <laughs> 95. I think we got a deal. All right, deal. I feel good about 9,500. I got some money in my pocket now, and I'm very happy to get rid of these things. This artwork looks like something out of a horror movie. Who did it? Pedro Federberg. It's right here in the back by his neck. He was a, a pretty big deal in the 60s and the 70s. He's a surrealist artist. Anything goes, just add a hallucinogenic drug. It is made in 1960s. I'm asking for 18 to $20,000 for it. How much did you want for it? 18 to $20,000. I know he's still popular. It's really weird, but let me have someone take a look at it, if you don't mind. Can you hang Absolutely. out for a few minutes? Absolutely. This thing is definitely unique. I think it's one of a kind. There is damage on this thing. The expert seems to have good news. Pedro Friedeberg, all right. 
He was a pretty eccentric man, kind of semi-functional art. In the 1950s, everybody was trying to paint with meaning. He created these works that were kind of the opposite of that. He used to call it uh, anti-art for art. We have chips on it. We have wax everywhere. These cards are all faded out. You know, I, I don't think the damage is going to impact an artist like Frieda Berg. Rick makes a lowball offer. How about 15? No. What is your best price? 12. And that's the best. I'll go 11. I can't think. Rick is intrigued by these disguised books, but will he put his money on them? Vintage gun smuggling books. These were used for smuggling guns? Yeah. I like to sell them because I just don't really need them anymore. You're not going to find something like that on the market anywhere. How did you get this stuff? A friend do some recon in a house, found this box, he didn't want it. And how do you know they were used in World War II for smuggling guns? It came with this from the government. Have been confiscated and turned over to the proper army authorities for violation of army regulations. Someone had absconded with some German pistols and made this and tried to ship it home. It's pretty cool. It doesn't look promising. If you think about it, wouldn't it have been a lot easier and looked a lot more real if you took a real book and cut the pages out or something like that? He probably did this by hand. They're different though, I'll tell you that. If it's of such low value, why is Rick spending time on it? Well, he has a knack for making a profit out of seemingly low value items. No way to know if there's a market for these. But someone might want these as a curiosity. Curiosity pieces don't sell for a lot of money. And I'd like to have it. What'd you want for it? Name a price. 50 bucks. Just give me 100 bucks. I'll give you 60 bucks. I have a coin I think you might be interested in. What do you got here? It's a shekel of tire. We only buy American coins, man. Hold oh. on, hold on, hold on. Since when do we only start buying American coins? Well, that was our rule. Whatever. May have a lot of significant historical value to it, and I think they could give me a lot of cash for it. In Jerusalem, it's from the time of Christ. Supposedly, Judas received 30 pieces of silver. It was probably a coin like this. This could be one of those coins. No. <laughs> There's still a possibility. However minute. It is still valuable due to its rarity. Rick discusses the item with the owner. Rick asks the owner how much he's looking to make out of the damaged coin. They literally stood four feet back and struck it. Even the most skilled guy with that hammer was never going to get a perfect strike every time. They're all off-center a little bit. Everything about this is right. Problem is, someone cleaned it. If this wasn't clean, I'd offer you $5,000. Wow. After some negotiation, Rick buys the coin. How much do you want for it? $2,000. What do you think, Chum? It's old. <laughs> Can we take 14? I can't do 1400. It's also been cleaned. How about 1750? 1500? I could do 16. Yeah, 1600. All right, you want to go write them up? Hopefully, that'll at least get us some diaper spot for a few months. Rick shows his purchase to the old man, and Richard is not quite satisfied. What are you going to do? That's it for Jesus' DNA. What did you buy, Rick? I got a good deal on it. As soon as I can get it authenticated, 2500 three grand, somewhere around there. The price don't sound bad. Do you do anything around here anymore besides complain? Well, that's part of my job. After some time, Andy walks up to the Pawn Stars and informs them that the coin they bought might be stolen. I got some uh, potentially bad news. The shekel that you recently brought in that might be stolen. Well, that's 1600 bucks down the toilet. According to the pawn shop rules, Rick has to return the coin without getting it back. Luckily, they get the coin back. So what's up? Coin we've been working with the police on. The guy who originally owned it compensated for his loss. It's ours. They released it this morning. Well, it's not stolen. The insurance company paid for the loss. So that makes the coin free and clear. Don't do the end zone dance yet. If it's real, will you shut up? I have brought for you. This is an actual printed page from the Gutenberg Bible. Really unbelievable. A single leaf, the Gutenberg Bible. The first substantial printed book in the history of the world. The owner shares some details about the writing and the paper. In the 1920s, came upon an incomplete copy, and broke it up into single pages, and he sold them as single pages. Is it printed on the other side? Hand rubricated with colors, one of the most beautifully printed books. Rick asks for the price of the item and requests Rebecca to come validate the price of the writing and check the legitimacy of the paper. How much you want for it? $65,000. $65,000. I'm calling it Rebecca. Is that what I think it is? It's a page of it. Well, a page is one side and then the other, so it's two pages, one leaf. What's it worth? They're gonna place this $80,000. The negotiation begins and Rick gets his hands on this piece of paper shortly after. 40000 55. Trying to be fair with you. I would go 45,000. 47,000. It would be foolish for you to say no. 47. We got a deal. It's amazing. I now own a page of the Gutenberg Bible. I'm at the pawn shop today to sell my limited edition Pokemon Game Boy Color. One night when me and somebody's went out karaoke, we stopped by an arcade. My buddy won it for 20 bucks, and I offered him 25 bucks to buy it.
I'm asking for $2,000. I have no idea what a Charmander or a Pikachu is. The original Game Boy was so incredibly popular back in 1990. They sold out of their entire inventory in two weeks. Any idea what you're looking to get out of it? Like 2000 the experts have different opinions, and things aren't looking good, but let's see how it goes. Game Boy console with Pikachu and Pichu on the decal. This particular system came out, I believe, in 2001. They released this system alongside the second generation of Pokemon. What are these kind of things going for? Depending on the condition. Unopened, definitely got some flaws. You got a crushed corner, you got a bunch of indents, sort of puncture in the actual box. So what's it worth? Based on the condition, this was 1200 bucks or so. Thanks for coming down. Thanks. The bubble bursts and the final deal is made. All right, so I'd offer you about 300 bucks for it. I mean, it's definitely hoping to get a bit more. 700. How about four? Oh, yeah, yeah, we can do the four. The deadliest item that's ever walked through your door. That's just the key. What is it? It's a Russian ICBM launch key. Seriously? It would launch a thermal nuclear weapon. There's a real creepiness about it. I could make this myself. How much do you want for him? Rick is hesitant to keep the key. Later, Mark is called in to find an appropriate price for the keys. Uh, somewhere along the line of 10,000. Okay, uh, my concern is how simple they look. So I called in my buddy Mark to authenticate him. They're launch keys, Russian. They look pretty simple to make. You made this out of titanium, bigger garage. What did I know? <laughs> titanium is really hard to work. They were used for launching spacecraft. Pretty rare item. Yeah, they are rare. The negotiations begins. $1,500 for them. Okay, um, I'll keep it. Well, thanks. Thank you. Is there a lot less creepy, very, very significant. The mother of all Super Bowl rings. I'm looking to get anywhere from like 22 to 21,000 for the ring. Rick asked him where he got this gem from. I'm a broker and gentleman came in. Rookie Brian, he's a wide receiver. Did a deal with me and never came back to get it. This thing weighs a ton. Well, it's from Super Bowl 39s when they beat the Eagles. Rick asked if he could take a better look at it and he obliged. Okay, do you mind if I take a good look at it? Take your time. Rick checked it and added that it looked hand engraved, but he also had other concerns. I just really, really don't like this Jostens mark inside it. Uh, Jostens is the company that made a lot of the Super Bowl rings. No, I mean, this one looks hand engraved. This is precision machine engraving inside of it. This looks like it's in sloppy hand engraving. That has got me so concerned. So how much were you looking to get out of it? I was in the mid to low 20s, 22,000. Um, 18. <laughs> Why so low? Have you seen the economy? I go 21. I know you have a Patriots ring, but you don't have that Patriots ring. 20 grand, $100 bills. If you go 20, you go 21. Just because I need a Super Bowl ring for every one of my fingers. Deal. Deal. All right. What do we got, man? The first home robot ever mass produced. Okay. What does it do? It acts like a pet at home. Pees on the carpet? <laughs> so where did you get this thing? Found this in a flea market. Retail for about $4,000. You can also put some microchips in it, play games. Show me what it can do. The owner turns on the robot and shows Rick and Corey what it does. Yeah, I've seen enough. What is the purpose of talks? People like program them, do silly things. Is there a remote control for it? It's all autonomous. Any way I can program this thing and get me a beer. They actually have an arm for this robot. What do you want to do with it? Rick asks the price of the robot, and in the end, no deal is made. I think I want to sell it. How much do you want for it? 2000 I don't think I can sell it. Well, here's what I say. It may not sell right away, but it would really look cool. And That's just not one of them. <laughs> you made my week by bringing this thing in, though. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I'm a little disappointed. I guess I'll just pack them up and bring them home. The seller brings in what seems to be an ordinary sign, but it turns out to represent one of the most significant periods in history. Got a sign from the Berlin Wall that I bought an estate sale. For lack of a better term, it just really sucked to live in East Germany. Germany, yeah. okay? It does not match what would fit in my bar. Behind the sign, there's a letter from one of the captains in the U.S. Army. And it mentions that it was at the one kilometer zone from the east-west German border. How'd that come to be? Like, where does it come down to where you actually build a wall across the city? The Soviet Union controlled eastern half of Germany. The United States and the Allies controlled the western half. Everything soured real quickly between the United States and the Soviet Union. Next thing you know, they're putting up a wall the biggest moments in world history. When the wall came down, it was a sign that the national tension were coming to an end. I don't believe this was in Berlin, close to a checkpoint, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a border crossing. Personnel, stop right here. Mm -hmm. Let's decide whether you can go closer to the border. $800 seems like a low offer for such a historically important item. But with Rick, you should always expect a tough negotiation. How much you want for it? How about $800? How's 250 bucks up? 500. I'll give you 350 bucks for it. Can't do any better than that? <laughs> I'll go 350, that's the best I can do. 
It's a deal. All right, man. Thanks a lot. Donald Duck fans would love this one, and it looks like Rick also loves it. Grumpy Donald Duck, and that's what people fell in love with him. I love Donald Duck. I thought he was absolutely amazing. They started in the 1890s, but in the 20s, he made a bicycle that was modeled after Lindbergh, and this was their biggest seller. The rear tail light rechromed. Tank needs to be restored. And Donald Duck's face, I don't know if that's actually cracked or that's paint. I know the most popular one, the one that goes for the big money nowadays, is the Lindbergh one. A quick deal often comes with side effects for Rick. How much do you want for it? 3000 for it. This one's in amazing shape, but there are some issues with it. I'll give you 1500 I'd do 2800 2000 Can you do 2400 2250 and I'm crazy at that price. Okay, I'll take that. We got a deal? The restoration expert considers a plan. Probably have to rewire it, get the lights working, probably have to clean up the battery box. So how much? 350. Well, that'll be amazing because I paid 2250 plus 350. I'll be in at 2600. Pretty, I'll get four or five thousand on this, right? All right, cool. So I can pick it up tomorrow? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 350 bucks. All right, I'll see you next week, man. Right. Well, Rick is in for some bad news. I'll be in at 2600 and I should get five thousand out of it, right? I got some bad news. It's not a true Donald. Fake Donald Duck bite? Find the serial number. But also, the first two numbers are 53. Shelby only made this bike in 1949. I've been in this business for over 30 years. I have never, ever heard of a fake Donald Duck bike. We all make mistakes, Rick. It'll be okay. I have a military uniform of some sort. I want to sell this uniform because it's just taking up space in the closet right now. I'm... So where'd you get it from? It's in a trunk in my grandma's attic. I found it after she passed away. It belonged to my grandfather. So how many total pieces did you bring in here? Or? Well, we've got the hat, um, the jacket, and these pants, I'm assuming, go with the jacket, same material and everything. Another hat somewhere around here. And then there was another set of pants in there. Definitely World War II. Was he a pilot of some sort? I'm assuming Air Force or something like that. Actually, it's Army Air Corps. There was no Air Force yet. Rick spots a price tag on the uniform and asks the price of the item. Later, Rick's expert friend is called to the shop to assist him further. Oh, look, still got the price tag on it. $7.50. Officers back then had to buy their own uniforms. Do you want to pawn it or to sell it? You know, it's in great condition. So how much did you want for this thing? To be honest, I don't really even know. I don't either. I got a buddy who deals in all of World War One, World War II. Let's give him a call. Uh, World War II officers uh, Air Corps jacket. Yeah, what about these? Um, I don't even think these go with the uniform, but hey, those are part of the uniform. They these are these trousers are what you call pinks. Nice and insignia. He was a second lieutenant. But the nicest thing about this uniform is the bullion patch. GIs, there'd generally be people selling uh, what they call in-country made patches. You know, people that had a little extra money, they'd have them made up and they'd be more showy when they went out in town. The 15th Air Force saw a lot of service through Italy. A really nice collection, but this is what you call a crusher hat. Very popular with pilots. They're very expensive and smash them up and put them in your pocket. They wouldn't get damaged easily. This is worth maybe four times more than your regular army officer's hat. The expert does a very detailed evaluation of the war-related items and suggests a price for all of them upon the owner's request. So what do you think all of this is worth? Total value to be about $800. Oh, wow. All right, thanks, Paul. So what do you want for them? $800, so... I'd give you 400 bucks for them. Yeah, 400 bucks, that sounds fair. It's a deal. All right, deal, man. Thanks. Okay. A sealed Mike Tyson's punch out. Game is definitely rare, and Chum can't stop talking about it. Mike Tyson's punch out. Tindo Entertainment System. This game came from a collection. It was a single owner. Was originally a regional manager for Kmart. I'm looking to get hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I know right now games are really, really hot, especially the stuff that came out in the early '90s. Mike Tyson was actually the first celebrity that Nintendo used to endorse a game. He would play a guy called Little Mac and beat Mike Tyson for the championship belt. The expert shares some great insights, and the price range is coming out great. I actually remember this copy from an ex-owner of a Kmart store. Considered the third major print, hitting above a 9.0 is exceptional, desirable for a lot of collectors who care a lot about condition. So what do you value it at? The 70 to $80,000 range. Could it be more? For the final deal, will it go through? I'm gonna offer you $50,000. About 90. 55? No, 70. 60? Keep that in mind if you do decide to sell it for 60, because I'd love to own it. Thank Have you. a great day. Thank you, too. What do we got here? 18th century flintlock pistol, used around the Revolutionary War period. Use this to smash somebody in the head. Got a lot of history to it. I think it's a really good gun. My wife is uh, is kind of pushing me for it. I love this gun. Like, been the cream of my uh, collection, and... Where'd you get it? I got it at a gun shop. There was a seller there. Corey asks the price of the item, and doubts the legitimacy of the pistol. Thus, an expert is called to the shop to authenticate the weapon. How much are you looking to get for it? I'd like to get a grand. A grand? Um, not that 
that wouldn't be worth a grand. I just don't know if it's real. I'd like to call in an expert. Your accuracy was not so good. What do you think it's worth? After evaluating the authenticity of the pistol, the expert suggests a price for the item. The deal takes a turn, as it is revealed that the item is artificial. Anywhere between fifteen and twenty-five hundred. Unfortunately, I know a reproduction. Um, you're sure? Hundred percent. The owner has a hard time facing the reality and gets infuriated. I paid eight hundred bucks for this. You, you got burned. I feel bad for the guy. I should have got the paperwork. My wife was pissed, and now she's really gonna kill me. The seller hopes to get a great deal for his rare Batman Hash One comic. You've kind of brought me one of the holy grails of comic books here. I'm at the pawn shop today to sell my Batman number one comic, one of the most iconic comic books of all time. So Batman was around prior to this, and back when DC was Detective Comics, first comic book where it was just all about Batman. I mean, they even introduced the Joker and Catwoman in this issue. This is a big deal, man. It came out of a... Um, Original owner collection, 5.5 condition. The Pawn Star is not impressed with the initial offer. So what are you looking to get? 250000 Oh, okay. It is a number one. Mind if I have a buddy of mine come down and take a look at it? Not at all. The expert sides with the seller. What are you asking for in this book? 250000 This is one of the strangest books. In 2016, it sold for $239,000. In 2018, it sold for $227,000. For $210,000. That's you, right? That's me. In my opinion, this is a huge book. It's Batman number one. First Joker. It's the first Catwoman. $210,000 to me would be good. The final showdown begins. Realistically, what would you take for it? 250,000. It's just not really my business model. For me to make money on this, I'd have to offer you like 100 grand. Unfortunately, it's just a little too rich for my blood. I completely understand. Thank you for bringing it in. What right. can we do for you today? Air Force clock from the Cold War era. From my uncle, who was an Air Force mechanic. It actually comes out of the cockpit control panel on uh, planes that were from the Cold War era. My uh, uncle was a mechanic in the Air Force and came home with it one day, gave it to my dad. This is what is known as a universal clock. Clock, really. It went in all sorts of aircraft. The clock is still functional, but the old man wants to be careful with how much he spends on items that are not in a high demand. The negotiations begin. So how long you had it in your family, sir? 50 years. It has a stopwatch capability. But this clock is not in high demand. So I'm not going to break the bank to buy it. What are you trying to get out of it? $300. Be a buyer about $150. Middle at $250? I'll go to two and a quarter, but I ain't going no higher than that. Yeah, I could do that. Go okay. write it up, Chumley. What do we got here? First American edition of Jules Verne, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Well, this is the book with Moby Dick in it, right? Moby is not in this book. You ever hear of Captain Nemo? Finding Nemo. Uh, the big deal about the book is, though, written in 1870, birth of science fiction. So it has original cloth on the boards. What would you like to get out of it? I want 10,000. I think you better call your dad over here. This is a big item. Looks like the universe is in favor of the seller today, but will the pawn stars oblige? The value is really tight. Not in the best shape, nonetheless. You have to keep that in mind for collectors. With all of that in mind, 12,000 pretty happy with that. There may be your only 50 copies, which is a tiny amount for a book this important. Well, that was a wild negotiation. I'll give you 7,500 for it. Too low. I think my number is still 10. I'll give you 8,500 for it. So there's not that many out there. Who are you going to sell it to? A collector. You know how many of them you know? None, personally. I know a lot. You're going to have to come down from 10. I can't pay 10,000 for it. I will come down to 95. Maybe a 9. Can't do 9. Why can't you do I 9? I think I'm going to give you 25% return. I think that's a good number for you. All right, that'll work for me, man. A really tough negotiator. I was not expecting to go that high. It's one of the rarest first editions that we've ever had come in. Rick travels to Arizona for this deal, so it must be promising. So I got a lead on a 1963 Volkswagen Carmen Diaz. But the car is all the way in Arizona. So recruited Corey and Chum to come with me to have a weekend road trip. It wasn't quite what we expected, but Rick knows how to make a deal. Rick, I want to make a stop up here in a few miles. Amazing lead on a roping machine. We're going to go check that out and try to buy that. Here it is. You must be Kimmy. I am. There it is, Rick. OK. This is Shorty. He mostly works on concrete or something solid because he just spins his wheels in the dirt. Sparky 3, mechanical, runs off of a remote. You rope the head, you turn him off, and the healer comes around and ropes the feet. So can we see this thing work? <laughs> I told you it was cool, Rick. It's a lot of fun for kids learning position when you're roping. That's horns. So how much do you want for these? For the big one, 4,000, and for the little one, 800. Oh, I think it's great. Well, that's a good deal. 
I'll give you 400 bucks for shorty. Just so I can play with it. A deal? Yep. All right, what do we got? 1984 Olympic boxing ticket stub with a few autographs on him. That's a Vander Holyfield and Mike Tyson. This is definitely cool. Corey talks about the athletes who signed the ticket. How did you get them to sign it? The U.S. team had a buy. They were all in the street clothes, kind of hanging out with them. Mike's head was hanging low, riding the pine. He really didn't have anything to do. Yeah, young and didn't have any money. And first time on an airplane, took him to lunch. And that's when I got a band at Hollyfields. After these games, both these guys were huge. Both went pro immediately after that. Corey asks for an offer. Any idea what you're looking to get? I think 500 bucks. Never seen anything like this. Do you mind if I have a guy come in? Please do. This ticket seems like a good deal to Corey, so he calls an expert friend over to assist him further. Are these their autographs? On uh, Tyson, blue ballpoint pen. Both are live. Tyson, the same type of signature. Very basic, very neat. You got a winner here. The expert suggests a price for the ticket. Today's marketplace, $2,000. <laughs> All right, so deal, 500. Wow, you shouldn't have brought him in. 1,500. I'll give you 1,000. It's more than fair, knowing how rare it is, 1,500. I'm just gonna have to stick it at 1,000. Can hold on for a couple more. So if you ever wanna come back, please do, okay? Thanks. How about 65? Yeah, I'll go 65 bucks. There we go. Rick faces a challenge. He wants the kit, but he won't pay too much. A German World War I field surgery kit. This item has just been gathering dust in my closet. Should be appreciated by a doctor. Everything you needed here for a proper surgery. Everyone was stuck in these trenches. The conditions were so bad. Right around 40% of the people who fought in World War I died from injuries. These are for literally when they do the incision to pull the skin back. This is probably used for removing fingers. When you're looking at someone's throat or their ear, it really light it up because you're under battlefield conditions. It's World War I. You probably don't have electricity. In the end, Rick always gets what he wants. How much do you want for it? Just $10,000. I'll give you two. This will be $3,000. I'll give you 2,800 bucks. 29? Do we have a deal at 2,800? Okay, we've got a deal. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. I have this to offer you. The earliest sticker sealed Super Mario Brothers Nintendo game. Pretty amazing. I guess this is a really early one. The earliest print of still sealed. Mind if I take a look? Absolutely. Sticker sealed version, which I know these are pretty rare. How much do you want for it? I would sell it for a million dollars. A million dollars? Yep. It looks like there is some backing to that figure, but will this be of any help? He wants a million dollars, which I think is insane. Probably the most significant piece of video game history. What makes this special, the first you're gonna see this sticker, so it's from the test market. Seeing this in this condition, it's, it's a complete anomaly. With things like this, it's high risk, high reward. I know firm offers that turn down at $300,000. At first, I thought you were crazy. Realistically, what do you want for it? I'm asking a million dollars. I'm not going to get into it with this kind of figures to start with. So, um, learned a lot, and it's good to meet you. Rick is more excited than the seller. He definitely loves the car. 1963 Volkswagen Carmen Ghia that we're going to check out. Hopefully, I buy this thing, get it restored. This is one of the greatest designed cars ever. You know, as far as I'm concerned, it's as pretty as a Porsche. I got the Carmen Ghia about a few months ago. Uh, it's got a few issues, nothing major. A test drive is essential for a piece like this one. Can we take it for a test spin real quick? Sure. I'm driving. Ow. It runs really, really good. Yeah, yeah, she's got her issues, but she's all right. Time to seal the deal. What will we take for it? I can do 12 grand on it. You can do 11? I think 12 is fair, you know? So 11 five's a deal. 12 grand's a deal. 11 eight? I think 11 nine sounds great. But you know what, 11 8 sounds better? I guess we can do the 11 8. Oh, all right. Okay, uh, what do you have here? The Avengers number nine, the very first appearance of Wonder Man. Stanley signed it himself. How did you get this? This woman had a box comic books. I came across this issue. I asked her what she wanted for it. She said, what's the cover price? Fished a dollar out of my pocket as fast as I could. Well, that's a pretty good deal. It's graded at a 9.2, one of the top grades of this comic. It would be a good investment. How much are you looking to get? If I got 6,000 for it, I think I'd be happy. Do you mind if I take a few pictures and send them to my comic book expert? Well, now the ball is rolling as the porn star has put in his offer. Will the seller accept? With the new series coming out, possibly could have a big item here. What kind of value would the book have? He's asking for 6,000. I did some due diligence, looked up some previous sales. I would be able to sell it, I think 5,000. Would you sell it for 3,700? I think I'll just, yeah, go ahead and pass for now. Yeah, it's only gonna go up in value. Yeah. All right, well, I appreciate you coming down and I'll walk you back out to the front. That's not how you present an item to Rick because he knows too much. <laughs> I have a watch here. Apparently it's an old watch. Where did you get it? A garage sale. Mind me asking what you paid for it? $20. I'd like to sell it because I don't collect pocket watches. Do you know much about it? I just discovered it and it looked cool, so. That's an American watch company that later became Waltham Watch Company. William Ellery. Abe Lincoln actually carried a Waltham watch. Really amazing back here. Um, 
Earl Butler Hero saved my life at Cross Key Robert M. Scott. So I'm assuming that's the Civil War. Probably 1870s, 1880s. It's a key wind and a key set. That would make it right around the right time period. Increase the cool factor by like 10 times. <laughs> Someone's got to check it. So the expert is called. The Battle of Cross Keys. This was early on in the Civil War. And this was Stonewall Jackson, best known generals on the Southern side. The Union side had over 11,000 men in this battle and the Union lost. Do you think it's legit? Okay, the time period would be probably the late 1880s. This appears to be correct to me. Thanks, man. Not a problem. Will Rick strike the best deal? What do you want for it? 2,000. 700 bucks. 1,800. Thousand dollars for it. How about 15? I'll go 1,300, not a dime more. 13 will work. All right, thanks. <laughs>